Okay, so you can see that we're in our spreadsheet again, and you can see that the type here is CI type gen H D W. So you remember that was set up from the actual category itself. So we specified that the extended form is going to be this CI type gen hardware. So it's given more columns here, more related to the actual generic hardware. So here I'm going to set the a model. Let's say a Dell E750. Could give it an invoice number. Hard disk size. So remember there are certain things in here that also will be mandatory. So there'll be things like PK, which is the primary key, CIID. Again, you can check this table against the the schema report as well, just to make sure you're bringing in everything. Serial number, again, I'm just going to make this up. Got other things such as warranty status, type, rack number. A lot of information here that's also very, very helpful. So I'm just going to delete that first row just to make sure the first row shows the column names and I'm just going to save as our import extended information great so I'm just going to quickly pause the video just while I upload this to the server okay so we're on the server and I've just uploaded this XLS spreadsheet so I'm going to go back into our data imports, so the data import manager and Excel imports. So I'm going to create a new import here, so extended information. Click OK. Again, it's going to be the same sort of template here, so I'm just going to select our information, generic asset. And here's the information again, tick the boxes that you need. There we go. And straight to the target value mapping. Let's select the database. So in here you have also got staging tables for each of these types. So you can see here CI type gen hardware stage, that's the one we're going to be using. There's also different forms for the network and server and software. So I'm going to use the Gen Hardware Stage and select the config item of the PKCI ID and what else did I have in here? Model Model HDDD size Serial number and invoice number Check the syntax, there we go. Great. So unique key, just make sure that's filled in there. Okay. So what you'd normally do in this particular instance is when you've got extended information, you would want to run the main CI information first, then the extended, just to make sure it all goes into the um, the actual staging area and what will happen is because it's already in the database it will recognize that it needs to do an update so the first thing I'm going to do now is just go back to our client and go into the staging area so remember we still have these couple of completed records and click on the box that says delete completed records this just makes sure that we don't actually confuse ourselves with the ones that's been created already Okay, so on the extended information, now we've completed all these, we've got all the information we want, just going to go run import now, and do the same for the, there we go, for the main one. Remember, it was only one CI that we actually updated with extended information, so that will show um, with that information. So let's go back to our main client. 
and then back into staging and search. So we've come back with our three assets if we determine the import actions. Complete. So you'll see that one is one is a create. So the reason for that is because we declined it last time. One is no changes. The reason for that is because we didn't include the extended information last time for the asset two. And we got an update. So we got an update for the asset one because we did include the extended information. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on it. Then what it will tell you is which particular items here have actually been updated. So you can check on each particular one if you do wish to do so, just in case it gives you some uh, rubbish information, it might have automatically pick up the wrong information or, um, you know, your data is only as good as what you've got there in your database. So if you confirmed at this stage, you got, yep, you're happy with these information, this Dell and 500, um, that's good. So I'm going to go into import selected items. It will prop, pop up here with a entry saying add new diary entry. So bear in mind that we have changed the CI. So you may wish to enter your own particular entry into the diary. There we go. And there's that one completed. Okay, so if we now go back to our asset list and go into asset one. There we go. What we do have on the left hand side here is a details button. This will show you all of the extended information against this CI because we had the generic hardware. It's come up with all the hardware based information. So here you can see them just in a in a list here. Again, you can actually just populate up the man manually if you have like a supplier manufacturer created or just uh, you know CPU name etc. Remember, if you do have a separate type, so if I change the actual category of the hardware desktop, so you can see here the different kind of types here, so CI data form. So if I change it to the software, save changes, it's not going to delete any of the information in there. It's just that it'll bring up different information. Go into the details. So you can see it's brought up information about licenses, manufacturer version, license type, key. So I'm going to keep that as my hardware. So I change that back to Gen Hardware, just a generic hardware form. There we go. So that's all our information. Um, just make sure that if you're doing imports, you can do it scheduled. Uh, you can do just a one manually uh, into your system. You may wish to break it up into uh, smaller chunks just to make sure there's no hit on your performance of support works. Doing it out of hours is always advised. If you do have any problems with this, let me know. I'll do a separate video in regards to the software.